Life without design, Seneca says, is erratic. Basically, if we don't have rules, if we don't have practices that we're trying to abide by or standards we're holding ourselves to, we're just kind of winging it. This is where we get ourselves into trouble. Meanwhile, when we have clear black and white rules, when we have standards, it makes our decisions, our lives and our days much easier. So that's what I want to talk about in today's episode. I want to give you 12 stoic rules for life. Own the morning. A stoic rule for life is that you have to own the morning. One of the most relatable passages in Marcus's meditations is him struggling with precisely this rule. He's woken up, it's before dawn, it's cold, and he doesn't want to get up. He says, but is this what you were put here to do? To huddle under the blankets and stay warm? No, of course not. We have responsibilities, obligations, and potential we want to realize. So, a stoic gets up early and rises to meet the morning because we're lucky to have the morning. One of the flip sides of the stoic memento mori practice is this. If you went to bed thinking, hey, this could be the end of my life, it's over. Then when you wake up in the morning, you're like, this is extra. How awesome is this? You're excited to get up and get after it. We can win the morning by getting up early, by not getting sucked into our phones, and by not getting sucked into what other people want from us. Instead, we should be intentional and proactive, spending some time with a journal, going for a walk, doing deep work, and focusing on the most important task. Marcus Aurelius tells us to concentrate on what's before you elsewhere in meditations. So if we win the morning, we've already won a good chunk of the day. And remember, if we win the day, then our life is made up of days well spent. Focus on what's up to us. Another stoic rule for life is to focus on what's in our control. Epictetus says this is the most basic job of the philosopher. There's some stuff that's up to us and there's some stuff that's not up to us. If you don't know the difference, you're lost. We have to understand that we have a finite amount of energy, and if we focus on things that are not up to us, what other people say, what other people do, what's already happened, or what may happen in the distant future, we're neglecting what's right here in front of us, which is up to us. Not much is up to us, but our opinions are up to us. Our emotions are up to us. Our actions are up to us. What we do about what has happened is up to us. Mastering the dichotomy of control, what's laid down in the serenity prayer, having the courage to change what we can, the wisdom to accept what we cannot, is a critical stoic rule. I focus on what's up to me, and I leave what's not up to me to other people. I leave the mistakes, judgments, worry, and anxiety to others. I focus on what's up to me, and do what I can do here. Be present. Another stoic rule for life is to be present and not suffer from imagined trouble. Think about anxiety, worry, and fears. What we're doing is thinking about things that are not in our control, things that haven't happened yet. Seneca says, he who suffers before it is necessary suffers more than is necessary. We suffer more in our imaginations than in reality. It's a bad use of our creativity to catastrophize ourselves into alternate realities that have never happened and probably never will happen. The Stoics are realistic. They do think about the things that could happen, but only insofar as to come up with a plan for how they would respond to that and then move on. They come back to being present, asking, what's in my control right now? What can I do? They are proactive but they don't torture themselves with irrational worry. One thing every day. Seneca, writing to his friend Lucilius, says, let's try to acquire one thing every day, something that will fortify us against poverty, death, or any other kinds of misfortune. Like a quote, a story, an idea, or an anecdote. He and Lucilius exchange these things in their letters. He says, here's the thing I promised you and he's excited to receive something from Lucilius in return. The path to wisdom isn't about massive epiphanies or huge breakthroughs. It's a day-to-day -day thing, 
Stoicism, as a philosophy, is something you do, acquiring one new thing daily. A passage, a quote, a page, or an essay. It's an ongoing process. My rule is to try to find one Stoic insight every day. That's what Daily Stoic was built around. And, as part of this rule, we should also aim to do one good thing every day. Stoicism isn't a selfish, self-absorbed philosophy. It's about virtue and doing the right thing. So, how can we set an intention to do something helpful, kind, generous, or decent every day? Stoicism teaches us to make virtue a verb, something we are doing in every situation. Is this essential? Another Stoic rule expressed as a question by Marcus Aurelius is to ask, is this essential? He warns us that most of what we do and say is not essential. But when we eliminate the inessential, we get the double benefit of doing the essential things better. So the rule is to do only what is essential. Simplify. Ask yourself, am I doing this because other people are doing it? Am I doing it because I've always done it? Or am I doing it because it matters, because it moves me forward? If it's not essential, eliminate it. Saying no is such a powerful word. We say yes to things because we don't want to be rude, but we end up being rude to ourselves, our family, and our obligations. When we say no, we are saying yes to the things that matter. Speak with the dead. Zeno, the founder of Stoicism, visited the oracle at Delphi, where he was told, you will become wise when you begin to have conversations with the dead. Zeno later realized that reading is a way of having conversations with the dead. This is why they call the Western canon the Great Conversation. The idea is to read every day, not the news, not social media, but the works of the master thinkers Seneca, Socrates, Zeno, Lincoln, Shakespeare. Books allow us to annex into our age all the ages of the past, as Seneca said. Take time to read in stillness, away from screens, and you'll find wisdom that has lasted for millennia. Tolerance Another Stoic rule is to be tough on yourself but tolerant of others. This might seem contradictory, but the Stoics emphasize self-discipline. Marcus Aurelius reminds us to be strict with ourselves but tolerant with others because we can control ourselves, not other people. Others make mistakes, they don't understand Stoicism the way we do, and they have their own shortcomings. So be forgiving and understanding of them. Journal Another Stoic rule for life is journaling. As Marcus Aurelius shows, journaling helps us reflect on ourselves, our decisions, and our thoughts. In the opening line of Meditations, Marcus writes, Today I escaped from anxiety. Or no, I discarded it because it was within me in my own perceptions, not outside. This kind of journaling allows us to work through what's happening to us internally. It's about self-awareness and self-examination. Seneca advises Lucilius in his letters to do this exercise of self-reflection each day, to take stock of where you fell short, where you did well, what you can improve, and how you can better prepare for what's to come. A stoic life is a life of improvement, and we can't improve if we're not checking in with ourselves regularly. By journaling daily, we become more aware of our thoughts, actions, and tendencies. Practice Voluntary Discomfort Seneca advises us to practice poverty and discomfort ahead of time to prepare for adversity. He says, Set aside a certain number of days during which you shall be content with the scantiest and cheapest fare. With coarse and rough dress, saying to yourself the while, Is this the condition that I feared? This is an important stoic rule for life. Don't wait for adversity to find you. Go out and practice it. Whether that's fasting, sleeping on the floor, taking cold showers, or putting yourself in situations where you're physically or mentally uncomfortable, you're preparing yourself for tough times. The Stoics believe that if you practice poverty, you will realize it's not as bad as you fear. This builds resilience and reduces anxiety because you know you can handle whatever life throws at you. 
don't suffer twice. Another key Stoic rule is this, don't suffer twice. When something bad happens, you shouldn't suffer both from the event and from worrying about the event. Epictetus says, it is not things that upset us but our judgments about things. So, a Stoic focuses only on what actually happened, not on making it worse by worrying, catastrophizing, or feeling sorry for themselves. Let's say you lose your job. A Stoic doesn't complain about it endlessly or waste time with unproductive thoughts like, why me, or what if I never find another job? Instead, the Stoic looks at what happened, accepts it, and figures out the next steps. The event has already caused some pain, but you don't need to add more by ruminating or fretting over it. This is a practice that helps reduce suffering in life. Live with virtue. Living with virtue is central to Stoic philosophy. As Marcus Aurelius says, waste no more time arguing about what a good man should be. Be one. This means that we don't just think about Stoicism, read about Stoicism, or talk about it, we practice it. The Stoics believe that the only good is virtue, and this should be our guiding principle. In every situation, we should ask ourselves, is this virtuous? Is this just? Is this the right thing to do? And we should let virtue guide our actions. The Stoics believe that wealth, fame, and status are indifferent. What matters is how we live and whether we are acting according to our principles. Remember, you will die. Memento mori, or remembering that we will die, is one of the most famous Stoic practices. The Stoics didn't dwell on death to be morbid or nihilistic. They used it as a reminder to live fully, intentionally, and in alignment with their values. Seneca says, let us prepare our minds as if we'd come to the very end of life. Let us postpone nothing. Let us balance life's books each day. This is a powerful rule for life. Live as if today were your last. What would you do differently if you knew you wouldn't be here tomorrow? What would matter and what wouldn't? Memento Mori encourages us to live with urgency and purpose, knowing that our time is limited. Amor Fati The Stoics believed in loving one's fate, Amor Fati. It's not just about accepting what happens to you, but loving it, because you understand that everything that happens is a part of the larger whole. Marcus Aurelius reminds himself that everything is part of the universe's plan, and Epictetus tells us that we must meet each moment as if we had chosen it. This is one of the hardest Stoic rules to follow, but it's also one of the most powerful. When something difficult or painful happens, a Stoic doesn't just tolerate it, they embrace it. They say, this is what I need to grow, this is what the universe has set out for me. Amor Fati is about finding joy and opportunity in everything that happens to us, no matter how difficult. If you're inspired by these Stoic rules and want to integrate them into your daily routine, subscribe to Stoics Every Day, where we explore more ways to live a life guided by Stoic wisdom. Don't forget to leave a comment below on which Stoic principle resonates with you the most and how you plan to incorporate it into your life. Let's continue this journey together.